Okay, so we're talking about internal rotation of the knee when you've got weakness through the VMI or weakness through the hip stabilizers. And what it does when you're on one leg to actually the hip movement and the knee movement. So a lot of people are talking about internally rotating the knee, especially when they're squatting. You've got to externally rotate the knees, get them out over the toes, which is really important. And I'll show you what happens to the pelvis when that knee internally rotates as well. Because if you've got internal rotation of the knee due to knee pain or injury or weakness, you're gonna have something going on at the pelvis and that's really important when you're squatting. So it's not just about avoiding knee pain, it's about what's happening in the back. So, this is a great example because Elette has got an ACL reconstruction and so he's on about week four and what that means is he is getting his VMO back but he doesn't have a very good VMO. So this is a great example of someone who's got a weak knee and a weak hip system because when you get surgery like this, his glute stabilizers, hip stabilizers and external rotators are down compared to his left hand side and so he compensates a little bit. Um, now you can see the tone difference, okay, so there's his left, there's his right. When he stands on his left, this is a good leg, what you'll see is he maintains really good alignment so his knee is tracking very well, so stand on your left for me, he doesn't roll in, he's, he's looking really good. If you stand on his right, you watch his right, and immediately before he even lifts his leg, he just rotated his knee in. Okay, now obviously when the knee internally rotates, it destabilizes, so it's not a very safe position, not a very strong position, especially when you're squatting. And we talk about when people are squatting, if you go to two feet wide for me, Elette, so go wide, wide, wide. When you're squatting, obviously you want to be, you know, really straight foot like this, and you know, it's easy to externally rotate here, and that's a nice, safe, um, strong position. If you can't get that position when you squat, when he goes into a squat, he's gonna start causing more pain and problems here. But it's also what people don't realize is what is happening at the hip, okay? So it's hard to see from the front, let's look from the back. So if you go and have a turn around. Let's look at what he does in his back. Okay, I might just come this way. If he's gonna stand on his left leg, what tends to happen, if you stand on your left leg for me, honey? This is good. Can you see how his hip raised up here? Okay, so he's nicely spinally aligned, he's nicely working very hard there, that's great. And so this buttock is working really hard, so it's glute made, it's stabilized, that's all working, his knees in alignment. So he's basically a thing of like, he's up and square, okay? So he's like that nice 90 degree angle. When you're really strong, this rise is a little bit higher, so you can see he's a little bit higher on the side. If we go back to two legs again, so there's level, go left again, go left. He rises a little bit, which is great, okay? He's maintaining a nice neutral spine. Stand on your right leg for me. Yeah. Now when he does that, can you see now, see that big shift he's got going on there? And he's dropped down on this side. So instead of being level, he is now down because he's weakening off here. His knee's internally rotating, and when you internally rotate, you lose your control here, and that is letting go. So when he lets go, he has to go, well, to maintain balance, I've got to then compensate, and so he twists in here. So if you imagine if you're doing one-legged work, under load, okay, step-ups, step-downs, jumps, lands, all that sort of thing on one leg, can you imagine what's happening in the lower back? And this is how people get back injuries from simply doing a one-legged exercise with something going wrong, whether it's weakness in the knee or weakness in the pelvis, because remember, you can have this thing going on with a good knee. You just might have a weak hip, and that might be from an old hip injury or the fact that you're really tight, you've got some mobility issues in your hip that need to be sorted and you have to compensate to maintain that stability. So really important to watch that. So um, with that sort of thing, you've got to just think, it's not all always about the knee, it's also about what's happening at the pelvis and keeping that pelvis level, if anything, keeping it right. So when he gets stronger, we're looking at getting that pelvis a lot higher through here, so strengthening up this side, and then so when he maintains, um, when he works on that one-legged stance, he is level, he's not, and he doesn't get injured. But also when he goes into a squat, so if you go into a squat for me, nice and wide for me, I think. It's hard because he's got an ACL recon, he's, he's early. When he squats, you also, if this knee is rolling in, he's gonna shift and compensate through the back here. So we don't want that happening. So it's really important before he gets load on his back and starts going to full squat pit, we need to get this whole system stronger and working really well, getting him externally rotating his knee so he can maintain some torque through there, some tension through there, and keep that pelvis level so he can keep a, a neutral spine, well, neutral spine this way, he's not scoliotic, and also a neutral spine that way when he squats.